So, hi, welcome. I'm Simon. Um, I recently developed for my master thesis a hand user interface with multisensory feedback. And um, today I want to show you how I implemented low budget haptics and um, yeah, how my interface looks like. Uh, I worked with MRTK, it's a called Mixed Reality Toolkit from Microsoft. And um, yeah, with that, I built my own scroll interface, my own scroll arm interface. And uh, in the next month, I gonna investigate uh, the effects of, um, yeah, on, on task performance, immersion and stuff. But today uh, the topic is uh, how I did it and how it looks like at the moment. Um, right, so um, when I want to add haptics to a button like here, for example, um, I searched for the button pressed event and I wrote a script called um, uh, haptic sound. And um, I'm gonna show you later how it looks like. But uh, the process is I um, edit here and uh, trigger the press key haptic sample. And what it will do, it will uh, shoot a haptic sound that I um, defined earlier. And I want to shoot the um, pattern one. And when I release the button, it should um, trigger the, the pattern two. And I can do this with every button and every interaction where I want to uh, trigger something and I can um, define every number I want to. And here at Syntax Hub, I, so actually I don't use Syntax, a bit of background. There are several tools on the market where that help you to, um, to design haptics. Like um, here, for example, the Interhaptics Composer, I played around with it and uh, it's pretty powerful for very, um, very diverse uh, vibrations or stiffness or texture. But for my purpose, I couldn't use it because I, am, uh, I rely on, on audio um, haptics and um, therefore I found a solution from Syntax that is quite good for the workflow within Unity. Um, but I figured out that Syntax doesn't support uh, the Oculus audio output when I want to um, compile my application and export it as, as, as APK. Um, I can't say that the haptic sounds should be, um, should be yeah, played out of the sound out file when I use this plugin. So um, I use this tool just for, for designing haptics, but um, I export it as WAV file. And then in, in my code, I um, have a part where here, for example, a moment, that uh, no, was too much. Right. Um, so I, the principle of maybe I begin to show how the hardware works. Um, so I'm working with, with uh, Baselet. It's this uh, armband from, or bracelet from, from Lofeld, a Berlin company. And um, yeah, this is a receiver. This is a, no, this is a receiver. This is a sender and um, it works with audio and, and it filters the specific bass frequency out of my audio signal. And um, right, I, if you buy these, kind of cable it gives you the possibility to split to split your audio signal into uh, left and right and um, on the one channel I put my headphone or speaker and on the other channel I put my haptics display and um, yeah this gives me the possibility to to uh, yeah prototype and play around uh, with haptics um, and I bought this for um, for 100 euro and um, there are also other other audio driven haptic gadgets like like this oh, sorry. Um, like like uh, Vuja this thing that's for 
actually the same purpose like Baselet for um, making music more immersive, but um, I don't use it for music. I find it not applicable for music, but uh, yeah, for VR and AR, it's pretty uh, powerful for prototyping purpose. So uh, back to uh, the script and Unity. Um, here you uh, can add on the number zero to nine. It's also the numpad uh, numbers on your keyboard where I can uh, see here every pattern if I want to try out several patterns. And um, right, I um, added for a button press, this button press sound from MRTK and uh, a created sound, a created haptic sound um, here with, uh, that I created with syntax. And um, yeah, when I, when I shoot an event, it will um, play the element one from sound and element one from haptic patterns. And that's basically the idea behind it, behind my audio driven prototype haptic. And um, yeah, and I can try to show you the results. Hopefully it works. It's still in still a prototype. Oh, I need to turn on my mm -mm. Oh fuck for real rain. I wasn't on that second. Yeah, in the meantime, I can explain some uh, parts of um, my code that I used or that I created for using it with syntax because I imagine a workflow later where I use syntax to design my haptics and I can implement it easily here. So here, for example, when I design a sine curve here, with the frequency, the duration, amplitude, and everything, I export it as SIG file. That's the um, file format from SIG, uh, from, from uh, syntax, I think. And I can just drag and drop it uh, to, um, to my haptic file here on the top. And uh, that's the way how I can use pre-made or made files in, um, in syntax. And if I want to create on the fly haptics, custom haptics in Unity, I created a script where I can just activate it by this checkbox that I want to use my custom haptics and not the file above. So uh, it will use these uh, values and the X value is the frequency. The Y value is the, um, the duration. So it's the part here from ASR and the Z value is pitch for, I use pitch for scrolling. So when I scroll to the top or scroll to the bottom, there should be a little uh, pitch um, difference. And the pitch maximum and minimum I define here um, with these two values. And um, right, so when I uh, designed my haptic pattern and I'm happy with it, I create a WAV file of it through syntax and then I um, put it in here in my pattern list where I want to have it. And that's for me the cheapest workflow at the moment and the possible workflow uh, that is also able to export or with which I am able to export my application um, on Quest standalone and um, without having, uh, without needing, without me needing to uh, have my link cable uh, connected to my PC, um, right? And um, yeah, that is my my setup, and I will quickly check if my right. Set is ready. Oculus Link. Okay, okay, ready. And let's see. 
how it sounds like. I hope that I have enough light here for for hand tracking. Maybe the hand tracking is a little too bad then. Let's see. Right, first step is calibrating my arm. So I define the calibration zone and there I can scroll through the list. And the bass, what you hear at the moment is, will be the sound that is uh, passed to the haptic display. And um, right, I can move the window through the through the room, how I like, if the hand tracking would work well. Yeah, it's not not best uh, surrounding at the moment, but anyway. Um, ah. Hey Siri, Licht im Schlafzimmer auf 100 Prozent. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, much better. Um, Right, and here for my evaluation, I added uh, two buttons where I can activate and deactivate haptics. It's hard to target the button when I don't rather see the haptic. Yeah, and that's the actual sound that you hear through your, through your headset. And um, this is the sound that you hear through your, through your haptics device. Right, and I have also a follow me function that when I follow, yeah, uh, when I move my head, it follows me. And when I, tri when I touch again the anchor, the, the toy is off. And I think I have also have a speech command. Let's try. Follow me. Nice, it works. Didn't expect that. <laughs> Yeah, and when I say follow me, follow me, yeah, it uh, turns off. Yeah, uh, pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, there's so much more to explore. Um, um, yeah, if you want to know more about my project, stay tuned on LinkedIn or maybe later also on Twitter. Yeah, that's it. Let me know if you want to, oh, here's the camera. Let me know if you want to know more about that. If you have questions from beginners to beginners, uh, because I learned all that uh, since uh, in, I began, to, uh, began in November and everything was so new for me and it was a big roller coaster uh, ride and um, yeah, I'm happy to, to answer all questions and uh, to help out. Also for people who are used to work with Mac, like, like me, actually I'm a designer and uh, it was, a, it was a, 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 a hard decision to buy a Windows, but uh, it's necessary. I recommend it to everyone who want to dive into that, buy a Windows and um, yeah, and also the work between Mac and Windows. I'm switching a lot and found, found several hacks to use your magic keyboard on both. And, um, also, this is quite useful here for your Oculus Quest when you want to develop for hands. Um, I, just a moment, I, um, I used, um, uh, sorry. I uh, yeah took off the the foam and also the hat thing that I can wear it under my, uh, around my neck and um, that helps me to not being not that helps me not to be uh, helps me not to always put my headset on and um, right and. Sometimes it feels like it cuts the headset cuts into my shoulder here, and that's the reason why I have this uh, pillow under it. 
on this strap. It's very I can recommend it. It's comfy and you can and you can develop pretty long with that and uh, without putting on and off your headset a thousand times. And um, right, that's it so far. Um, maybe in the future when I have more time after my thesis submission, I can show you a bit more details how my process was and how I implemented custom icons. That was a also very uh, hacky workaround because the docs of Microsoft are not very informative about that. And um, yeah, yeah, just uh, let me know if you want to know more about that. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, it's my first YouTube tutorial. Hope you liked it. <laughs> and it's not a tutorial, it's actually just an insight. And um, yeah, anyways. Uh, have a nice weekend or day, evening, and see you maybe next time.